This has got to be my favourite trellis stitch, I think, and this one is called Battlement Couching. It's very beautiful, very simple to do, and um, quite stunning um, effect at the end. So what we're going to do is pick several colours of the same range and of different tones, so from light to dark. So these are the colours that I've picked here. I've got a range of yellows, um, four yellows. We'll see how many we need. We might only need three, but I picked four yellows, ranging from dark to light. And I've started this stitch with my basic square grid and I've used the darkest yellow. Now you can go from dark to light or light to dark, but when I've done this you'll see see the effect that it creates. So I'm going to go from dark to light. So I've used my darkest yellow, made my square grid. What I haven't done is stitch the grid down. So the stitches still move here. And what we're going to do is we're going to layer grids on top of each other and each grid will hold the previous grid down and then the top grid we actually stitch down. That's the one that we hold in place. So I've got my dark yellow down. So this is the second darkest yellow that I've got here. And I'm going to put the same grid over the top but just slightly to one side and then we build up these layers of colour to make our grid. So We've already got the grid in position, so we don't need to start in the middle to get the angle. We're just going to follow that previous angle. So the first stitches I put in were these long ones here. So I'm going to do those ones now. Now try and repeat the grid in the same way, put the same layers on top of each other. I'm just going to come just to the right of that stitch. And it just follows that all the way along to the end and sits next to it. You don't want to overlap it and you certainly don't want to gap in it, so as close as you can to it without overlapping it, like so. And you can come up on the same side, just to the right. That's important, don't go over to the other side now because it won't look right. You need to stay on the same side. Just go into the right, take my needle down that side. do that all the way along the shape. You can do the little trick with just lying the needle down to make sure it's going in the right direction. Holding it in place and stitching it down. There's the last one that way. Right, got all of the vertical ones in. Now let's put the horizontal ones in. It's finished there so I'll start down here. Now you can choose whether you go underneath or above. So I think I'll go to the right and underneath. So to the right of the vertical and underneath the horizontal. It doesn't matter which side you choose, just stay on the same side each time. And then just below that previous grid underneath. You can see how that colour is starting to build up already and when you've got lots of layers in it really does look very effective. Just take your time to get them in the right place because these will all move until we get the last layer on top. We're not going to tie it down to the very end so it's important you get them in the right place. Okay so you can finish that colour off. I think we will need the four colours. colour number two. So then bring in colour number three. So we're going towards the light end of the scale now. Be quite organised about your colours because if you miss one out it doesn't quite work. So repeat again. Started here from the vertical ones. 
going next to it. Staying on that right hand side, so they get lighter each time. Quite quick to do as well, this one, which is nice. And you can fill the whole shape in if you want. You can keep going with your colours until you can't see any of the fabric underneath. Or you can have a little space in the middle. You can see the square getting smaller as I put more stitches in. And then for the horizontal ones, it's underneath. Really accurate with this. Every layer you add will add any errors, you know, as slight as they are, they might only be tiny, but each one will show up more than the last. So there's my third. I'm still not tying any of these down. And then my final layer. Is the lightest yellow. And then that's back down to this point down here. And the final stitch. Okay, so that's the last of my grid there. So we've got one more thing to do and that's to hold the grid down. So all of these stitches will actually move now. So we need to secure them in place. So what we're going to do is just couch down over the last grid, the grid on the top in the same color. So if I just come up in that point there with the square. Now you're not going to do a big long stitch over all of them. There's no need to do that. The bottom ones are held down by the one on top, so it's just the top one that we need to hold down. So I'm just going to go over that cross section of the lightest yellow there, just with a little straight stitch. And you'll see suddenly how that neatens it up and pulling it down into position. And you can just adjust if you need to, make sure they're nice sitting nice close to each other but not on top straight down with the needle <clears throat> if I put the needle in at an angle at this point then I'll move the grid on top so straight up have it exactly where you want it and then straight back down again you can pull that quite tightly down and just fasten down that top layer of stitching So there of the final layer. It's all been stitched down on top, it's not going anywhere. Like I said, you can just fiddle with it just to get them all sitting nice and neatly together. And that's dark to light, um, so you can do it the other way around, go light to dark, and that will give you a completely different effect, but a really beautiful stitch, battlement couching. <laughs>